Hi Bobcats, this is Miss Lee, and today's video is on the area of parallelograms. Again, this is probably something maybe that you talked about in elementary school. Not quite sure on that, so let's get to it. First of all, we're going to start with a rectangular shaped, maybe like an index card. Think of this as an index card. And if we were to cut from the right corner diagonally to some point on the top line, if we were to cut this piece off and then translate it, move it without rotating or flipping it, move it to the other side, we have a parallelogram. So what happened to the area? Did the area change from the rectangular index card to our new parallelogram shape? Well, we cut part of it off, but did we take it off and move it out of the way? No, we didn't discard it, did we? We just moved it, we relocated it, but the area of the part that we cut off is still here. So the area stays the same, doesn't it? So we keep the same formula. To find the area of a parallelogram, the formula is area equals A equals base times height, B times H. And go ahead and write down your characteristics of parallelograms. Just like a rectangle, it's a four-sided figure, except instead of having, well, let me take it back. We still have the parallel sides. Your top and your bottom are parallel, and the left and the right are parallel. And just like with a rectangle, opposite sides are equal. So your left and your right side links will be the same. Your top and your bottom side links will be the same. How parallelograms differ from rectangles is that the lines are not perpendicular, so there are no right angles. One of the important things to notice is the, is the height. When you go to the doctor's office, one of the first things they do when they take you in the back is they stop at the scale and they weigh you and they see how tall you are. They measure your height. So when you get up there and you get ready to get your height measured, they always tell you stand up straight and tall. They don't want you slouched. They don't want you leaning to the side. They want you straight and tall. That's what height is. It doesn't matter the shape that you're looking at, a rectangle, a square, a parallelogram, a triangle, a trapezoid, it doesn't matter. The height has to be straight and tall. It has to be perpendicular to the base. So the height is from the highest point to the base. Perpendicular, meaning straight. So when you look at this side over here, let me highlight it. This side that says A, this is not your height. Is this side A, is that straight and tall, like you're getting your height measured at the doctor's office? No. So you pick the highest point and you draw a straight line that's perpendicular to the base. And that is the height that you would use. Sometimes you'll see it inside the figure. Sometimes they'll draw the height outside the figure. So with a dotted line. And they'll say, okay, this A is not your height, but we can draw this perpendicular if we were to extend B, which is the dashed line, and draw a line perpendicular from the highest point down to B, then this line here would be your height. So sometimes you'll see it notated inside the figure, sometimes it will be on the outside of the figure. And let's see what this monkey has to say here. The height has to be perpendicular to the base. We talked about that. Okay, let's practice. Whoops, too fast. We're going to write an equation to determine the area and solve. So again, you have to write down your formula. You have to write your equation. Okay, the formula. This is a parallelogram. So the formula is going to be area equals base times your height. Now we're ready to substitute values into our formula. What we have here is our parallelogram is on a grid. Okay, we have square units. So we need to go ahead and figure out how many units is the base and the height. The base is the flat side, the straight side on the bottom that your figure is sitting on. So we just count the squares. We're going to start here. This is our start. We don't count the start. We have to move one square first. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So the base is six units. This is not the height. That would be hard to count, wouldn't it? It's not straight and tall. It's not perpendicular to the base. 
So you can see that we've already got a line from the highest point that's perpendicular to the base, and now we're going to count this. So I'm going to start right here, and I'm going to count, go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the height is going to equal eight units. Now that I know my base and my height, I can plug those values into my formula. So my equation, A equals the base is 6 times the height, which is 8. And easy math, multiply, you get 48. Now we don't actually know the dimension here. When they're on graph paper like that, it's just called units. And of course you have to square it. Okay, next shape is also a parallelogram. So the formula is area equals base times height. What is your base? Your base is the bottom, what you're sitting on. So the B is going to equal to 6. The height, I have 18 here. Is it perpendicular? Is it from the highest point perpendicular to the base? Yes. This is your height. So plug it into your equation, or plug it into your formula. Area equals the base, which is 6, times the height, which is 18. Do your math, and the area is going to equal 108 feet squared. Okay, our third example, it is a parallelogram, so area equals base times height. Let's identify our base and our height. Here's our base at the bottom, that's what it's sitting on. Okay, the 13, is that perpendicular to the base? No, this is extra, whoops, extra information. The height has to be perpendicular to the base, and they're showing us the height on the outside this time. So this 12 is your height. Okay, let's plug in to our formula, write our equation. Area is going to equal the base, which is 20.8. Okay, I have a new pen and I keep hitting the wrong button on it. 20.8 times the height, which is 12. Do your math, and the area is going to be 249 and 6 tenths. The units are centimeters, and square them pretty simple. The main difference between this and rectangles and squares is that the height <coughs> excuse me, has to be perpendicular to the, base, to the base. It has to be standing straight and tall. So don't be fooled by this side length over here because this side is not straight and tall so it cannot be your height. Alright, one more. A parallelogram has a base of 12 inches and an area of 312 square inches. Which equation can be used to find the height h of the parallelogram? All right, so this time we're given the area, and we know the base. So let's write our formula. Area equals base times height. So we know the b, the b is 12, and this time we know the a. So we're looking for the h, this is our unknown. So you're going to write your equation plugging in the values you know. We know our A this time, it's 312. So let's go, do we have something equals 312? Yes. We know the B is 12. So this is a 12, this is 312. And we're multiplying the base, the 12, by H. So when we come here, this is 6 times H equals 312. Well this is our area, the 312, but there is no 6 in our problem is there, so it cannot be 8. B is 24x equals 312. I bet you this x is supposed to be an h, but in either case, is there a 24? Is our base 24? No, our base is 12. 312, so they're multiplying the area times the height, that's not right, is it? And this one is 12x, which should probably be 12h, equals 312. 12 times the height equals 312. So this is the correct formula. So it's still the same except for this time you're given the A and it's the H that stays the H because that's what you're looking for. Okay, now you're ready for some practice problems.